Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to help me break down Week 7 from a DFS perspective. What's happening, Jim? I am all good, Greg. Uh, there's no more Marcus Mariota to torment me and make me feel sad about his poor play uh, each Sunday. So, sad to see my guy on the bench, but at least it means I can stop getting mad on Twitter. So, you, you win some, you lose some, but I think this is probably a net positive for me. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. A little nervous about the Yankees, but feeling good overall, sleeping well. And that's really all we could ask for outside of my one in five team not being the worst team in the history of fantasy football. So, other than that, doing just fine. That's why I need to turn to DFS. And that's why I got to look at who I'm stacking this week. So, we begin with the Rams of all team, whose offensive looked pitiful over the past couple of weeks. But all they need is a trip to Atlanta to cure that right up. Matt Ryan and the Falcons are facing off against the Rams, which means stacking this game seems like an easy decision. Yeah, the Falcons are the slump busters of the NFL. You know, teams go in there and they're struggling quite a bit, but then they can turn things around really quickly, and I expect the same thing for the Rams here. And we always want to attack this Falcons defense. They are the second-worst pass defense in football based on number of fires metrics. That will not shock anybody, but I think that the way that I want to go at this is with Brandon Cooks paired with Jared Goff because Cooper Cup is awesome. I love Cooper Cup. I'm going to use Cooper Cup this weekend. He is very good, but he's $7,800, whereas Brandon Cooks is $6,700. And where I want to use guys like Brandon Cooks, who have tons of speed and tons of athleticism, is on turf. And we saw Will Fuller really shred this Atlanta defense in this same spot. And Brandon Cooks, I think... We've seen him struggle so far this year, but he did get 10 targets in a game earlier this year. We know his downfield role is still very good, so I want to buy in on Brandon Cooks. This is also a good spot where the Rams' offensive line, as bad as it has been, should be able to keep Jared Goff clean in that pocket, which can allow him to work down the field more often and use guys like Cooks down the field where he excels most. Brandon Cooks, $6,700. I love the upside that he brings. Jared Goff is $7,800, and yeah, He's struggled. He's looked bad quite a bit of times, but they also have not had a matchup anywhere near this. They have faced five teams that are currently in the top half of the league against the pass based on number of fires metrics, only one good matchup so far. And Goff looked good there on the road against Seattle. Now he is indoors. He is facing a team that's even worse than Seattle with the Falcons. I think that it makes a lot of sense to load up on this game in general, but specifically with Jared Goff and Brandon Cooks. I wish my fantasy team could play the Falcons to get that slump buster. We need it. Hopefully, my DFS team will have both Jerry Goff and Brandon Cooks out there so they can get me the points I need to at least win a little money. Rams, a no-brainer stack this week in Atlanta. But as I kind of alluded to earlier, playing the Atlanta Falcons as well also makes sense. Matt Ryan, despite losing all these games, has been fantasy greatness. And pairing him up with a wide receiver, well, that's no problem either, Jim. Yeah, you kind of get your pick here because, yeah, the, the Rams did add Jalen Ramsey last night, but they also lost a key to lead the injured reserve and lost Marcus Peters to that trade. So, yeah, they add Jalen Ramsey. That's going to make them better against one wide receiver, most likely Julio Jones, but they're going to be pretty vulnerable against pretty much every other spot, which means that Calvin Ridley is in a spot here again, kind of like last week, where his odds of hitting his ceiling are higher than they tend to be. Ridley this year has 14 in deep targets for the full season. Season, and he has at least two deep targets in every game except for one. The upside is there. He's not that expensive. So I do think that Calvin Ridley is a pretty good play. But as you mentioned, Matt Ryan, we should try to find quarterbacks who are hyper efficient and will throw the ball a lot. And that's exactly what Matt Ryan is right now. Despite, you know, playing from behind quite a bit, Matt Ryan has still put up really good efficiency stats. Despite the interceptions, his efficiency stats are still really good. And he is throwing the ball a ton. He's had at least 300 yards in every game so far this year. He has had three or four touchdowns and all of those except for two. So the ceiling and the floor for Matt Ryan are still really good. This Rams team does have some talent, but as we've seen, you know, in the game, they let up a ton to Jameis Winston. In. Russell Wilson was able to do well against them. When you get a good quarterback facing this team, especially the key to leave out, they can do really good things. So Matt Ryan, his salary has gone up, but I still don't think it's too high. Calvin Ridley, volatile, but his odds of hitting the high end of that volatility, decently high this week. So we're just going to keep on stacking the Falcons, and we're going to stack the Rams too. Hopefully this game does not disappoint, because if it does, I will be quite sad on Sunday afternoon. But I think this one should be pretty fun, both from a real-world perspective, if you like offense, but also for a DFS perspective. 
The Falcons' defense being pretty terrible, also for the Rams. The Rams' defense, even though they're getting Jalen Ramsey, allowing all of these yards to the running back and having needing Matt Ryan to come from behind, well, that's great, too. Matt Ryan paired with Calvin Ridley adds up to a lot of fantasy points. This game going over the number. But if you don't want to stack this Falcons-Rams game, you don't have enough money to do it, maybe you could look to New York and MetLife Stadium where the Giants and Cardinals are going at it once again, Jim. Two bad defenses. Let's start on the Giants' side. Danny Dimes may see the return of Saquon Barkley. You have Golden Tate there as well. Should be some fantasy goodness for them too. Yeah, right now on Wednesday, I'm operating under the assumption that Saquon Barkley will be back for this week because he did get in limited practices last week leading up to that Patriots game. Obviously did not play, but seeing him being on the practice field leads me to believe that he will be good to go this weekend. And I'm not all that concerned about a multi-week absence given that he did get practice in last week. So if he gets in a full session by Friday, we're going to be lighting him up. But I think kind of regardless if he plays, you should go at him because his salary is down to $8,600. That's pretty attractive. And this Arizona defense is bad. They do get Patrick Peterson for this week, but they're still going to be a bad defense outside of him. And the pace of their offense inflates the volume for the opposing team. So even if their defense does get better, it's still a spot that we will want to attack pretty regularly. So Saquon Barkley, I think, shouldn't be that tough of a sell. Daniel Jones, yes, he disappointed against the Vikings and against the Patriots, but you have to look at the situation there, too. He was facing the Patriots with none of his top targets. Seems like Evan Ingram should at least be back for this week. He'll have Golden Tate as well. Sounds like Sterling Shepard is much more doubtful, uh, but he will have more weapons this week than he had last week. And also that game was on a short week. And the Patriots defense, I kind of think you have to write off whatever quarterbacks do against them, kind of no matter what. So yeah, Daniel Jones has had a couple of rough weeks, but he can rush for a little bit of upside. He's going to run a lot of plays this week as well, I'd assume. So Daniel Jones at $7,200, a pretty good value quarterback for this week. So Jones, I think in a good bounce back spot here, I want to stack him with Saquon Barkley. If you're worried about Saquon Barkley off the multi-week absence, I think that having Ingram makes sense. It sounds like he should be back too, but also Golden Tate in the slot should be able to avoid Patrick Peterson more often than not. Avoiding Patrick Peterson is going to be the key here for this Giants offense. Daniel Jones coming off two tough games against Minnesota and then New England. Back in the saddle against a worse defense here in Arizona. You know Saquon Barkley, if he's active and playing, is going to get his. And Daniel Jones is going to look to the guy he looked to the most last Thursday night. And that was Golden Tate. Should be a recipe for success for this Giants offense. But it's not just the Giants offense who we're looking to at MetLife Stadium, but the Arizona Cardinals offense as well. As we said just a moment ago, when you're facing the Atlanta defense, it's a cure for everything. That's what happened to Arizona last week. Now, this week, let's see if they can ride that momentum. Kyler Murray had one of his best games as a pro last week against the Giants defense. It should be more of the same. My question to you, Jim, is who are you pairing Kyler Murray up with? For me, it's almost always David Johnson. I do like Larry Fitzgerald, and I'm interested in Christian Kirk as he comes back, but I love getting the uh, the double dip that you get when these guys pass it, or when Kyler passes it to DJ, but you also get a lot of touchdown equity between these two guys. Chase Edmonds did have a touchdown last week and is a touchdown threat, but Basically, if you, Kyler Murray, with David Johnson, you're probably going to benefit from almost every touchdown that the Cardinals do score, unless it is a Chase Edmonds rushing touchdown, and I like that quite a bit. And the thing that you could worry about here with the Cardinals is they are going outdoors, they're going on the road, it's a 1 p.m. game, they're facing a team off a bye, that could decrease their efficiency. But the reason that we like Kyler Murray and David Johnson is not due to efficiency. It's due to volume. And both those guys are getting a lot of volume right now, both as rushers and as passers slash receivers. For Kyler Murray, the rushing volume has been outstanding the past two weeks. He has 22 rush attempts in those past two games. That gives him both a big floor and a big ceiling should he find the end zone with his legs. So I love that for Kyler Murray at $7,700. As far as David Johnson goes, he's getting a ton of volume in the passing game. He's had at least five targets in every game that he has finished so far this year. He has 18% of their targets for the full season. That number could come down a bit with Christian Kirk potentially back this week, but even if it does, Christian Kirk is going to make this offense better, and that increases the odds that David Johnson gets a touchdown. So I would love to have Christian Kirk back for this game because it would increase my interest in David Johnson. We saw him still play a lot of snaps last week and get a lot of usage. 
despite that back injury. So no lingering concerns for me with, with David Johnson. And I think it makes a lot of sense to stack these two guys up. David Johnson is no longer below 7,000, but I don't care. He was just way too cheap then. He's $7,400. I still think that's too cheap. I think this is another great game to stack up. My favorite way to do so on this side is Kyler Murray with David Johnson. As you said, the best part about stacking these two players are whenever the Cardinals score a touchdown, you're going to have exposure to it, unless Chase Edmond runs it in from 50 yards out. But in general, it's going to be a lot of Kyler Murray to David Johnson, and then David Johnson just doing his thing on Sunday. The Cardinals, all the exposure comes through Kyler Murray and David Johnson. All right, let's get out of this game as well, and let's move on to Buffalo versus Miami. Another spot where, hey, this team's facing the Dolphins. Let's stack. Josh Allen and the Bills coming off a bye. Once again, I get putting Josh Allen in, but who are we pairing him up with? For me, I just want the upside. And the upside in this team always says John Brown. John Brown, $5,900. That's not a high salary, which I think can offset some concerns you may have about the Bills getting a huge lead early and not throwing the ball late in this game. Because John Brown doesn't need a whole lot of volume to pay off, especially when his salary is that low. He has 23% of the team's total targets this year. He has 29% of the deep looks, which means he is always a threat to bring in a long touchdown. As we saw with Marquise Brown, those are pretty common against this Miami defense. As far as Josh Allen goes, he is $7,700, and he disappointed against the Patriots, wasn't that great against the Titans, but we saw him do well when he was in good matchups the first three weeks. He had at least 17.96 FanDuel points in each of those, and this is another good matchup. So I think the way you handle Josh Allen is handle him based on the matchup. If it's a bad matchup, you'll want to shy away because the interceptions, the fumbles he gives up are, are pretty bad still. But... The rushing is there, and he can do well in a plus matchup, which is what he gets for this weekend. He is still running the ball a ton. He had 10 rush attempts the week after he had that concussion, so clearly still willing to run the ball, which means that rushing touchdowns for him are always in play. So I think that Josh Allen and John Brown, both very cheap, and both come with really good upside. So this is not breaking news. Everyone knows you want to target guys facing the Dolphins, but it makes a lot of sense, and I'm going to happily go to them, even though it is a pretty obvious stack for Sunday. you got to be cautious here because Miami, using Ryan Fitzpatrick, could be a little bit better. But Josh Allen off the bye, I'm comfortable with. John Brown at this price, I'm comfortable with. They've shown a real connection down the field. Hopefully the Bills get it done against Miami. One last stack to get to, Jim, and that brings us to the Jacksonville Jaguars. You have Leonard Fournette, still the key and the primary offensive player for the Jaguars. The Jaguars' defense, a little bit worse than they were this time yesterday with Jalen Ramsey no longer a part of it. Jaguars are facing off against the Bengals, arguably the worst team in football this week, but it is away from Jacksonville. You're stacking Leonard Fournette with his Jags defense. How come? Yeah, losing Jalen Ramsey is a pretty major downgrade for the Jaguars, and I think that that does matter for sure. But when you think about this Jaguars team, it's not all about the secondary. They also have this tremendous pass rush, which can cause a lot of issues for opposing players. And what is the biggest weakness on the Bengals right now? It is their offensive line. They started their fourth string left tackle last week, and they also had an injury at right guard. They've had injuries at left guard as well. They've had changeover at center. This offensive line is a complete mess. And when you're going up against the the edge rushers and the interior guys that this the Jaguars defensive line has – it's going to cause some issues, and I don't think they'll be that popular this week given that Jalen Ramsey is gone and the Jaguars are quite expensive. So I think it's a good spot to go at them, and if, if the Jags' defense does well, Leonard Fournette likely will also. He has 18% of the team's targets so far this year. The Bengals' defense ranks 19th against the rush, according to Number Fires metrics, and among the players in the main slate, I think Leonard Fournette has the best workload by a pretty decent margin with no Christian McCaffrey on the slate for this week. I think that we can say that it's also a great matchup. So you're giving me heavy volume in a good matchup where I can stack Fournette with his defense. I find that pretty attractive. Fournette is not cheap anymore. He is up to $7,900, but that's about where he should be. He could potentially be even more expensive than I would still pay for him given the amount of work he is getting in the passing game here. If you don't want to go at the Jags defense and still want to stack the Jags, I do like Gardner Minshew stacked with DJ Chark uh, off of a down week last week. It's a much better spot here facing off against the Bengals. So Minshew and Chark totally in play, but I got to get me some Leonard Fournette and I'll happily pair him with this Jags defense. If you don't want to go with Fournette and the defense, that's okay. Gardner Minshew in play, DJ Chark as well. And hey, 
Maybe you ought to go a different direction as well, depending on how risky you want to be. But the safest thing you could do with Jacksonville? Probably Leonard Fournette pairing up with a solid defense against Cincinnati. That's going to do it for us here on the Fan Duel. Hurry up, Jim. It's been too much fun. we got to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, we might get some more love for Gardner Minshew on tomorrow's show, talking some value plays. He is below 7,000, so might hear that name once again tomorrow. I'll talk to you then, Greg. Thank you. I'm always down to talk Gardner Minshew and that stash. The closer that we get to Halloween, probably the most popular costume this year. That and the Joker. I guess Gardner Minshew can be the Joker. I'll think on this. Jim will be back tomorrow with me. Have a fantastic night, and we'll see you tomorrow.